Open Science Festival. Meet, share, inspire, care. All right, so I want to talk about research quality, which I think in this audience is clear. Um, means something about research that's robust, that's transparent, that's open, and that is based on good research practice. I also want to talk about Wissenschaftszeitvertragsgesetz, which is a legal piece of legislation in Germany that determines how researchers uh, are employed. And in particular, it uh, regulates the time that researchers have to stay in the system in Germany, to the point where, uh, this is going to show up in just a second, I believe. We, I, the point is we don't have enough time, and now you're giving me a lot of time for this slide, which seems surprising to me. Okay. Okay, yeah, excellent. Okay, so we have uh, six years to do a PhD in Germany and another six years to do research, for instance, to be a postdoc. And after this time has elapsed, uh, you only have three options to continue um, your researcher career. And reform plans actually uh, shorten the time frame even further um, to the point where uh, you have four years only to do a PhD and then two years to kind of become established as a researcher to be a postdoc. And three things that you can do after this time frame are either to get a permanent contract, which basically means that you won the game and you're safe, or uh, you can get by on third party funding and really hope that you get a permanent contract after. But what you can't do is to keep um, working on um, non-permanent contracts. That means for many people, what happens is that actually they choose the third option, which is to get out of the system, to either leave into industry or to leave and uh, go to a different country. 87% uh, of researchers that are not on the full professor level in Germany are employed on uh, fixed term contracts and they face these odds, they face these three options. And I want to ask, you know, why is that the case? And in the words of the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, uh, they introduced this piece of legislation to avoid clogging the system. What, was, uh, what are the main arguments for, uh, for introducing this legislation? Um, the first one is um, that they want to foster innovation and make sure that by um, continuously introducing new people into the system of academia, uh, they ensure that there is always fresh ideas, new thinkers. But I think what happens in reality is that hyper-competition for the few uh, permanent contracts is being created, which instead actually hinders research progress because we don't have the time to focus on good research, on good research practice, but we have to churn out one publication after the next. The second goal um, behind this um, um, behind this legislation in Germany is apparently to select the best, to keep only the best researchers in the system and give them a chance to do research. While in reality, the selection procedures that we have for academic positions are far from optimal, um, and they result in what I would call a biased selection, which again has potential negative consequences for, uh, for the research output that we create. So what would be better? What should we do instead of uh, having this uh, time-limited um, idea of Wissenschaftszeitvertragsgesetz. Well, I think we should rather have more ability to do team research, where it doesn't only count who's the first author on a paper, but actually we give credit where credit is due, and um, this credit would allow you to get a job. I think it would be good if we had more programmatic research agendas, so it's not only churning out one quick publication after the next, but instead we can test the boundary conditions of the stuff that we do and that we're interested in. We can test rep reproducibility, we can test, test robustness, and I think for that we just need some time. More openness and transparency, I think here I'm preaching to the choir, uh, means that, uh, well, you know, to do that, we also need some time, and this is a perpetual task for all researchers, so there should be uh, permanent jobs for open science officers to help them do this job. We should also focus on more teaching of open science practices and open research practices, um, because if we don't do that, we just uh, don't teach um, the uh, researchers of tomorrow basically the core research skills uh, that they will need, and we just leave them behind and make the problem a problem in perpetuity. And we need more resources for civic duties that researchers try to kind of uh, get done while also doing their research job. So things like science communication, or uh, teaching, in fact, or uh, focusing on transparency and openness of um, research. All of this we don't really have time budgeted for and resource, resources budgeted for. So for me, open science, for instance, is just an expensive hobby because I should be at my desk doing research. Instead, I'm standing here. 
If you want to read more about this, now you have 15 seconds to quickly take a snapshot of this <laughs> QR code um, and uh, read more arguments about um, why quality research needs good working conditions um, and also international perspectives on this topic. Thank you so much.